All right, so just looking at the website of Avis Toolworks and showing a little bit about what their capabilities are, and you'll see a lot more details in this video, but clearly they're a machine shop with uh, plenty of capability and contracts locally and services locally that they provide for some big name uh, auto manufacturers, bourbon producers, and so on and so on. All right, guys, here we are on another laser install, this time at Avis Toolworks in Cox Creek, Kentucky. And you see we have a 1500-watt IPG machine with a tube cutter. And one of the things about when you get a machine with a tube cutter, the gantry being so long, they have to remove the gantry and all the wiring associated with the gantry, and it gets stacked and shipped separately. So that. here we are just using the forklift to pick up the gantry and uh, this was a great group of guys to work with. This is a machine shop uh, in Kentucky that uh, very successful, uh, a large book of business, and they decided to add laser to their normal, you know, three uh, traditional machining, milling, lathe work that they do for for other customers. So, all right. So uh, to get the servo motors mounted, you got to pull the side cover off to get access to the. Uh, the side of the gantry here and um so once you get the the helical gear and rack meshed uh they give you these jacking screws here so you the middle one puts tension going in and then the two on the sides you know gives it uh, movement and overall tensions it and then when you get that done you uh tighten all the mounting bolts up and that's uh, ready to connect up all right here's just a little walk through i was doing of back in there with the laser is you can see the tube cutter on the right they've got a uh, sort of a fabrication area and paint booth back there and then in the next area they do a lot of machine builds a couple manual machines in there but here is a Fanuc robot and we'll show more about that a little later in the video and then up in the front part uh, is the CNC area where they've got several uh, machine centers running there and some guys running those machines all right, so still connecting everything up now that the gantry's installed, just making all the connections. Some of them are very straightforward to make. That's the Z-Lift motor there, three wires that get connected in, uh, in the head of the gantry. And then here's the uh, oil line uh, configuration. And uh, some of these just get cut in the factory. And so you have to make up new ends and get those remounted. The, uh, the machine runs on linear motion bearings that are all oil injected. Some of the tubing, some of the wiring goes inside the gantry casting itself, and some of it runs along the cable trough. So, and then here's a laser head. This connection right here is very critical, very sensitive, and can be, if not done correctly, can cause problems with the machine running after the fact. And then here's just some of the water plumbing for the cooling of the laser head some parts of it you know the the water kind of circulates in and out of several entry and exit points of the laser head itself and um, you know it can be a little bit tricky getting that all connected up right but no big deal and not really a risky part of it because if you get to a point where you don't have proper cooling to a certain part of the laser head you will get an alarm and the machine will stop So go to the left again. So one of the very common problems is a limit switch issue. Sometimes they can be, you know, uh, wired backwards or connected wrong or they're magnetic. And so we were just kind of, you know, testing to make sure that uh, when you put something metallic on it, that you did get an, you know, that you showed the alarm and you saw that alarm popped up on there. All right, you see Luke Avis there. He is actually the uh, my main contact and uh, one of the main CNC machinists um, working there. Um, young guy, uh, worked with him for several months, you know, getting this machine purchased and installed. And um, I'm not sure what this video was, but I think I was showing something to the engineers. Tell jokes at the bar and be more. <laughs> no, man, it's cool. <laughs> we were building the first one. 
Yeah. Uh, we had videos from Japan because that's why they were doing it. And they're like, well, we want it like this. And we're watching. We're like, really? <laughs> Fires? <laughs> this one just make it set fire. And I said, no, no. Buy these hundreds of them. Okay, stand up. Maybe get some more. So this is a, it's not a FANIC control? Yeah. Oh, it is FANIC. Okay. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, okay. Yeah. Like I said, we had to build up instead of out. That's the Japanese way. And this big uh, Blanchard ground or milled piece here, y'all. We, now, we, we can do that if we wanted to, but we, uh, all right, so the Fanuc robot assembly that you saw there is used to make these seat cover parts. I believe they have a contract with Toyota. They just built the assembly, the robot, and put it all together. And then Toyota uh, obviously puts it in their production facility to make those parts with. So here's a little look at their uh, machine shop side. I, I showed it a little bit in a previous clip, but um, this was a really neat machine here, a lathe that is... Um, can be used manually or conversational CNC. And uh, they just had gotten it in. Really uh, well-made, nice looking machine here. So just about all these laser installs, uh, some part of it I do over the weekend because they, I normally allow about seven days total. So no matter how you slice it up, you're gonna be working there on a weekend unless you wanna just be, you know, take the weekend off and sit in a hotel. Um, and these guys, you know, gave me the, the building access. And so I had, you know, the full weekend in there to work by myself. So this is kind of a lots out operation. And obviously the lots were out. And a lot of times that night machines were still running when I was in there because uh, I would work late at night as well. So after I got back from Kentucky, I flew. You can see I'm on a flight here. This is uh, pretty close to a four hour flight from Dallas to Philadelphia to go to a, a shop up there with a six kilowatt laser to uh, help get it dialed in and do some training and I was just there for a couple of days on that one and I'll have a full video on their facility great group of guys up there to enjoy spending time with them uh, and then after this one uh, soon I'll be going to Blaine Minnesota to install a three kilowatt enclosed laser there uh, along with a press brake and laser rated air compressor and looking forward to getting that one going. And then after that, it's to Florida, and then Ashland, Missouri, and then also uh, to the great state of Indiana to install a laser for John Stith there. So lots of stuff coming up over the next couple of months. And then um, I'm also working with Jack and um, Grace at Prima to figure out how to get four lasers in one container and we got to put a stop to getting one at a time in a container because it's just when i bought my original laser it was twenty two hundred dollars for shipping to get the container to the port the shipping now has gone up to close to twenty thousand dollars for one container so obviously it really jacks up the price for any given machine and this has all happened just in the last you know 30 days 60 days time frame so Anyway, guys, lots of lots more sites to go to, lots of more lasers to install, and uh, if you're one of my customers, look forward to seeing you soon. I didn't really get any good footage of the Kentucky machine running. Uh, we were kind of running it to the last minute there to get it going, but you're just looking at a few shots of the uh, machine that I installed in North Carolina. They've been very happy, and at the end here, you're gonna see a little clip of me showing the owner in uh, North Carolina getting his machine running for the very first time he was just shaking his head at the speed of it but um anyway here's a preview of a, of a machine i have coming to me this is a very high precision press brake it's an eight foot 69 ton prima machine it's a four plus one axis cnc servo uh press brake with the Dellum control very precise very accurate uh the tooling i mean everything about it is at the highest end and this machine is going to be somewhere around fifty thousand um, dollars by the time it gets here and get it to you and installed and all that.